Hello and welcome! Tonight on the show, us paprika papas are trying Bendy's paprika paste in a cute little jar. Boy, we are so excited to have you. This is Sauce Spoken. And we're back. We are Sauce Spoken with a podcast detailing your favorite sauces, dips, and condiments. My name's Adam, and I'll be your host. And I'm joined here this week by my co-host, Tori. That's right. My name's Tori, and his name is Adam. And I'm fresh out of the roaster, and I'm fresh, and I'm here, and I'm ready for you. And you know who else is ready? A good friend who are right. He is going to be asking the questions around here, so no funny business. His name is E, and he's our co-host, and uh, you know we're, we're happy that he's here. Hi, E. He's ready. <laughs> ready? Yes, I am ready, and, um, and I'm even ready. I don't know if he's ready, but he is here. That is true. <laughs> I'm alive still, so that's that's a, that's a plus. Yeah, you uh, you've been sick. I got sick. I got very sick, and uh, you and texted I me realize. one day and said I was having pro- trouble breathing last night. You did, in fact, have COVID. We can we can say yep. that. Yeah, yep, you had COVID again, again, and, <laughs> and uh, lucky me. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we had a kind of a weird couple weeks there because... And now it's time to catch up with the host. Time to catch up. And uh, <laughs> I did it myself. I like that. <laughs> we had a weird couple of weeks there because we recorded the Mission Barbecue episode and then recorded another show. We had recorded another show immediately the day before that and then recorded another show on the normal Thursday after that. And I've been going off and on for a lot of work trips recently out of state. So it's been hard for me to be here for normal recording nights but we ended up getting because of the mission barbecue episode we ended up getting ahead a couple episodes which worked out super conveniently because it would have been very difficult for us to record last week and you guys well you it would be like impossible unless well unless i did it i guess remotely from you got from quarantine yeah you got covid and tori your wife got covid That's again right and just and i and i was busy and there was a whole disaster so Luckily, it played out that we had a spare episode sitting around there. We buffed it out, but it's it's been a couple weeks in short for us since we've been at the recording table. So during that time, Eric, you've got you got sick and you're still remaining sick slightly. Just got still a little bit of a cough, a little bit of like just find it tough to breathe sometimes, and a little bit of tiredness, which are all signs of COVID. But uh, yeah, it was actually interesting when I first got sick. I just thought, okay, this is COVID again. I know this, and. Uh, it wasn't until like Wednesday night, and I, I tested positive on Sunday, that I um, I was able to like. Well, you tested was, negative like twice first, right? I tested negative once on Saturday. Okay, right. Um, but then I, I was able to like stand up, like a little bit, like more upright, and I didn't realize that I was like slouching so much, and I was like, wow, you know, felt like how I, I can breathe a little bit better. I didn't realize how much trouble I was having breathing until I was able to breathe better. Wait, when <laughs> was this so you could breathe better? It was like Wednesday night. Like, yesterday no like oh, last wednesday yeah the okay. last wednesday before that so and and, and i'm still, still yeah and i'm still not 100 yeah. percent. but um, failed to mention that before i came over here it was too late but you are still said you're feeling a little sick still a little under the weather that's for sure but good enough to be back to work and back doing things we enjoy doing that's right, right. back on the show back being on the a show. super spreader <laughs> that's right <laughs> e coughing all over the place i'm gonna wash my hands yeah your doctor did clear you to come back to work at the bears matching she said you're no she longer did. contagious and you're clear to come back so he got he did seek medical advice for once in his life a rarity has never happened before anyways how's the rest of your week here <laughs> um i've been super busy at work because i've been i wasn't there so i'm just totally buried I binge watched some TV, slept to a lot of TV, so I didn't entirely watch it all. But what'd Very you nice watch, thing. E? Oh, it's Driving such a long Ms. list. What was it? The Diary of Miss Maisel. Is that it? Is the Secret Life? I think of Miss Maisel or something like that. Is that what it's called? I don't, I don't know, know. Me, bro. I don't know. The marvelous Mrs. Maisel. There That's you it. go. She's marvelous. Have you watched? No, that? I watched Stranger Things season four. I watched Russian Doll seasons one and two. Did you listen to any of our show? I did listen to two episodes. No, you didn't. Is the short answer. <laughs> I got some feedback from San Diego from our Mission Barbecue show. They, you uh, did? I did. You did? Yeah. What do you mean you got feedback? How? It was family members from San Diego. So. Oh, 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 you got not... You, you, okay, you didn't get feedback from Mission Barbecue. You got oh, feedback no, no. From, from people about the Mission about Barbecue the episode. About the Mission Barbecue episode. Sorry. Yeah, that's a big fucking difference. 
Eat. Yeah, that'd be really cool if we got feedback from Mission Barbecue. Like, don't ever come into our restaurant again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 you, we're you sending, fake critics. <laughs> we're sending your sandwich coupons. I'm glad you left the stickers here so we can identify you yeah. jokers. <laughs> Which I still haven't used any of those coupons, but uh, yeah, they just... You might want to lay low for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it was surprising. I didn't even know that my uh, my aunt, who lives out in San Diego, commented on the show. She said, oh, I really liked your, your on... You know, your live episode from the restaurant. She liked that format. She thought it was cool. So. Nice. That's good. Cool. Uh, well, what about you, Tori? What have you been up to in the past couple weeks? Since I've been quarantined, I went on a video game shopping spree. I bought three of them. And it bears mentioning that you weren't sick, but you were quarantined because of your wife. That's correct. So, yeah. yeah. So I missed out on, I don't, know, I don't know. A whole lot of nothing. Yeah, I missed out on Memorial Day weekend. That was a bust. Yeah, that's that was true. A stinker. Yeah, we all did. That is and, a, a uh, bit of a bummer. Yeah, so I bought a handful of video games and just rocked and rolled, man. Stoked about it. That's cool. Been playing the shit out of them. Last one I'm playing right now, Project High Rise. Project I like the sound of that. If you remember... It sounds like a city skyline type thing. It's very, very much. If you remember Sim Tower back in the day, it was like an mm-hmm. MS-DOS-based game. I do. I don't mm-hmm. think so. Sim Tower, where you you know you created lobbies and... You know, there was hotel rooms and office suites and all sorts of this. MS DOS? Yeah, it's an oldie. Really? It may, it may with the fly, actual floppies. Maybe. Yeah. Wow. I mean, okay. It's, it's an oldie, oldie. All right. Interesting. Um, like Windows ninety five type. Say stuff. Windows ninety five. It was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Windows ninety five. I think it was still a disc, but it. I mean, but it, it ran a hard on. disc. It would have been a floppy disc that was hard by that point for ninety five. Right. Or maybe that's, maybe some of the ninety five still did take the actual five inch floppies. I don't know. I don't remember either. It, I mean, it, I guess the point I'm making is it's, it's an old game. It's old, game. yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so Sim Tower walked so this Project High Rise could run, and I am just playing the bejesus out of it. It is awesome. Very cool. You know, a lot of infrastructure type shit you got to worry about, you know, telephone lines, cable television, you know, elevators, you know, sound and noise and smells and, you know, with the trash too close to the high-end hotel suites and whatnot. So, yeah, there's a lot to get into. It's pretty neat. I like it. Very cool. Yeah. You know, yeah, uh, as far as I go, like I said, I mentioned earlier, I've been doing a lot of, you know, kind of on and off for work travel, going back and forth to Cleveland, Ohio, you know, whoop, whoop de doo I did get some more Swensons, though, so that was a high point. Nice. I also tried a Raisin Cane's, which I've never been to one of those before. Have you guys been there? Nope. Cane's Chicken? Yeah, Raisin Cane's Chicken. Why does that ring a bell? Well, it's a major fast food chain. Yeah, maybe. I think there is one coming to Pittsburgh, but it's not here yet. Hmm. I never had it before. I had one of, I had that out in Ohio, which... They have a super basic menu. They've only got chicken strips, toast, Texas toast, coleslaw, and sauce <laughs> on the menu. That's oh, all they have. Okay. <laughs> that is extremely bare bones. I can't believe... That yeah. almost sounds like, how do they stay in business? But all right. I think they do quite well. I mean, they make... The thing is, like, I'm not the biggest fan of, like, chicken tenders. Theirs were good. Oh, and fries. I'm sorry. They have fries, too. Okay. Yeah. So, fries. Still, sounds like one meal. Like, you go in, like, okay, I'll have the number one. The only one. That's basically <laughs> what it toast is. And fries. <laughs> yeah, that, that's quite literally what it is. Like, they have the three-piece meal, and they have the Caniac meal, which, Whoa. of course, you guys know me. I got the Caniac. Caniac. I got actually. the Caniac and added on to it, actually. I got <laughs> what a, is the Caniac? I got meal? a Caniac, which is six chicken fingers, a side of fries, a side of coleslaw and a piece of Texas toast. And I got an additional coleslaw and an additional piece of toast. Because you're ordering for your friend. For me, yeah. For me and my <laughs> for me, myself and I. Yeah. Oh, wow. I was gonna play it off like I was ordering for two people and I was gonna split it. That's why I wanted two of the sides, you know, but no, I was just super fucking hungry that day. And uh I got they also give you the sauce. That's another item you can order, and it's just this raisin cane sauce, which well, honestly was a high point of the meal. It wasn't um the meal itself was fine. Like the coleslaw was de- was good. The fries were kind of mediocre. The chicken was decent. You know, nothing to write home about. I probably wouldn't make a point to go there again. Like I think if you really like good chicken fingers, it'd be a way to go. The cane sauce itself was kind of like a mayonnaise with some spices, like a black pepper type spice and like a little dollop of ketchup in it. It was fine, but okay, yeah. But I will say that they were beautifully efficient. Like I pulled. There's in. There's five items, bro. I How- know. <laughs> I know. That's exactly what it was. I pulled in and I was like. Oh, there's no line. This isn't good. There's no line at, like, prime dinner time. This isn't good. You pull up, you order, you go to the window, you pay, you pull up to the next window, here you go, you're gone. It's just poof, poof, right through. It's Super like what a drive through is actually supposed to be. Wow. Yeah, there's no waiting 25 minutes like you do for McDonald's sometimes. It's just whoop, right through. That's why there's no line. You're just in out, you know? Hmm. 
And the chicken tenders, like anything special about them at all, or just you say they're just no. they're just good. They're chicken yes. tenders. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I would describe them as like similar to KFC, which I don't know if that's like blasphemous or something, but that's from what I remember last time I had KFC chicken tenders, they're very similar. Mm. So like I mean, I, said, I think KFC has like a like a premium crunch to them. Like they're they're breading on KFC is like uh, a serious like. Okay, good maybe I'm crunch. misremembering because these were not that crunchy. These were kind of like almost almost lightly breaded. I would say. Yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah, they were they were good, but they weren't. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I thought they were fine. I'm just not. I'm not that big into chicken tenders. I don't know. Maybe our maybe huh. our boy AK would have liked them. Yeah, big yeah. A. Here I would have thought you liked tendies. I do like them, but like I, I don't know. They're fine. You know, they're good. They're good. I like a really crunchy one though too. That's the thing. And these were yeah. not super crunchy, mm. but they they were. I don't know. They were good. I bet you would like those moonlit. The ones I talked about, those moonlit smash burgers, they make also those chicken tenders that were you know, I pickled looked, in a brine. I looked something out. I looked that place up the other day. They make some really weird shit, too. Don't they have, like, a fucking, like, cheeseburger milkshake or some shit? Something really bizarre off the wall? Uh, they might. I know they ha- they do milkshakes. I mean, but I don't remember anything. I didn't even, I didn't look at the milkshakes because, you know, lactose intolerant, but, wow. you know, unfortunately. Yeah, I know they have something really weird there, but, um, but yeah. I do have a couple of Sauce Book and Rewind things. I want to slip one in really quick before we get into the actual sauce we're trying tonight. Yeah, I guess just to kind of close up my thoughts. Yeah, we didn't really do much for the past two weeks. It was fine for me because I've been doing so much work travel that it was nice to have a couple of days off to actually like catch up on my house chores and shit like that. But uh, I did want to do a little fact check because we did uh, an Indian dish. We did a korma curry from Paytac or Patak or Paytax or talk or however you want to say whatever (laughs) one of the eight ways we said it and uh i just wanted to revisit the thing something that eric had said about indian food the first time you having it if you're not like inoculated to those spices they make you poop like the curry powder i still stand true that's not true at all (laughs) no that's not true at a curry powder is just i looked it up to be sure and it's basically it's the exact same seasonings you have in anything else, just put in one powder, ground up together. It's not some special poison sauce. Hmm. It's like cumin and turmeric and pepper and shit like that. Like, there's nothing cayenne pepper. It's like nothing crazy off the wall like that. It's not like some super secret blend that you can only get in India. It's, so- it's seasonings you've had in a million other dishes. Yeah, it's just the level of it's just the spice. It's really just spice. It could be any spicy food. Eric, really, is what is what no. the online thing said is like. If you're not used no, to spicy food, where did you find this it from? Show me your a stomach. source. That was Google. I, I just googled right off the bat. You know why is it that Indian food that was so bland? There was no way that that oh, yeah. level of spice was having any effect on your gastrointestinal system. I no, that is wrong. My source is. I made it the fuck up. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it was. Like maybe you did experience that, but it was there's not like some Indian inoculation you have to go through in order to process that food in your bowels. But even Tori felt you did have. I did. Yeah, yeah I, had, can, I was in distress. I'm not saying that can't dist- happen, but I'm not saying from the two bites of Indian food that you ate, which have the same seasonings as Mexican food or any other food, did that to you? No. Rongo bongo. Rongo bongo. All right, I'll buy it. Well, all that being said, let's move on to the actual sauce that we're going to be trying here tonight, which is another one that may have some weird gastrointestinal distress. It actually looks like something that could be the cause of gastrointestinal distress itself. I have a quick rewind, too, if you want to just knock it out right at the same time here. Uh, sure. I have another thing I was going to talk about, too, but that's oh. okay. Go ahead. All right. Well, I just I wanted to say that I did try the... Um, no, I'm drawing a blank for The gingerbread... Gingerbread? What's it called? Gingerbread sauce? Yeah. yeah like, yeah. What, gingerbread it? spread or whatever yeah. it was called. Or ginger, yeah, whatever it was by... Uh, I can't even remember who the heck the maker of it was. Stonewall Kitchens. Anyways, I tried it on chicken because I remember how I said oh, I think it would be excellent on chicken and I thought it was fantastic. Insane. Dude. Truly fucking insane. And my parents thought it was fantastic on chicken breast. That's insane. My parents insane. tried the uh, fig and walnut uh, spread on the on lamb and they said that was fantastic. Yeah. I can see that being good. Gingerbread yeah. chicken <laughs> So fucking bad. <laughs> no, it was great. It was gingerbread really good. chicken. Watch out, Top Chef, my man. Gingerbread butter. That's what it was. Ugh, yucky. Well, uh, talking <laughs> about other things that are gonna leave a, <laughs> you're gonna have to try to salvage somehow. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna even try this one tonight. We are talking about bend, bendy, bendy, b e n d e, paprika paste, mild. And this was actually this was actually a gift. This was given to us by a former guest of the show, Kirsten. She's uh, and this is going to tie back into the episode later when we get into our tasting notes. 
But this was uh, something that she gave to me for us to try on the show. So thanks, Kristen. Uh, but yeah. without any further ado, let's get on to the visual description of the, the outside of the container that we're looking at tonight. And uh, for that, I'm going to pass it off over to Eric. Why don't you lead us off with that? It ourselves a cute little jar. I really like the look of this. It's, uh, you know, like maybe two and a half inches tall and probably around almost two and a half inches in circumference. It's, it's a baby uh, food jar. Yeah. Well, but it has like a really neat little neck to it. It has like a real, it swoops in fairly suddenly and then comes up to a little, a little neck. And it's, uh, I don't know, it has like a nice shape to it. I, I kind of like it. Is it, it exactly eight ounces? Uh, it is not. It really? It's 7.4. Oh, okay. Because it's, it's imported. It's 210 grams. Oh, which is, it, it still looks sounds like, weird. it looks like I used to work at Home Depot selling sample paints and it looks like one of the little sample paints only in a glass jar. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 That's about that size. That's well, for I was sure. Curious if it was eight ounces. Well, you're pretty darn close. So this, uh, jar has a metal lid to it and it's got a white metal lid and it has a uh, sticker on the top that says gourmet quality with a paprika pictured in the center of it and it has the um that's the italian flag i believe right like, at least the colors of the italian yeah. flag or mexico one or the other yeah. i'm pretty sure this is italian Little tricolor yeah. yep tricolor red white and green going down to one side and and attaching to the front label so you have to kind of like snap that off when you're um, opening it up. Yeah, it's a seal. Yeah. The seal of freshness. A little, a little, yeah, a little seal indicator. Of course, you could always press the top too and see if it's been released. The label itself has a, uh, Italian, like, chef with a chef hat, which I can't think of. There's an actual name for that, but I don't know it. The chef's hat. A toke. The chef's hat. Is that what it's called? A toke? Yeah, I think so. Wow. And he's giving the, like, uh, ooh, perfecto kind of, you know. Mm, bon appetit. Yeah. Call that a chef's kiss, my man. Se- chef's kiss. That's right. There we go. So, yeah, he, he seems quite thrilled with the sauce and says, bendy, paprika paste. And this is a particular, our particular one we're trying tonight here is uh, mild. Has another couple of peppers on it. Got nutrition facts on the one side. And the other side says, product of Hungary, imported by Bendy Incorporated, Verona Hills, Illinois. I did just look it up. It's called a toque blanche. A toque blanche. What that hat is called, the chef's hat. Nice. So now we all learn something. This is an educational show after all. Yes. Just don't take medical advice from us or anything <laughs> relating to Max. Don't listen to anecdotes and form your own ideas that nothing we do should be even construed as like a good example to follow for medical stuff. Right. And anything Probably the opposite, says. actually. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, that'll do it for the outside of the sauce. Without uh, further ado, uh, Tori, do you want to give us a little visual description of the inside of the sauce we're looking at tonight there? I certainly can't, since you asked me so nicely. I put some on my plate here, and I'll be darned if I, it doesn't look like spaghetti sauce to me. I think at a glance, I think it has that pureed sort of look to it where some it is certainly chunkier and thicker in some spots, and in others, it's not. Yeah, I mean, it it has... I have a ridge here of it on on my plate that I, I use the cheese like a squeegee. Um, I was playing with my food like nice. a pike. I was squeegeeing the sauce Weird. around. Yeah, you can see the straight lines on my plate. That was a result of it. But, uh, yeah, so I have like a ridge of sauce here on the side of my plate, and it... it, it keeps its form rather well i mean it's we got some nice stiff peaks as they say in the baking world and uh it, it it's maintaining um a blizzard test i'm afraid to do it in the jar yeah i don't know if the jar itself would pass a blizzard test but yeah we certainly got some stickage there but boy i i think it looks like spaghetti sauce i think it looks like a tomato based maybe a tomato paste yeah even. i think it actually looks more like tomato paste it's got like yeah. that really rich thick dark redness to it as opposed to tomato sauce which is a little bit looser yeah And there's no, like, green flakes in it, like oregano or basil or anything. It's just, like, straight up red. Red, yeah. There's not even any, at least noticeably for me, any pepper. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's extremely pureed. You know, it's definitely not, you know, so we've talked about this, I think, before, but paprika is essentially, so, like, if you want to get, like, cayenne powder, a lot of people are familiar with that, and that is basically, like, a ground-up hot pepper. You know, they remove the seeds, typically, I think, but then they grind it, like, with a mortar and pestle, essentially, and grind it into a, a powder, and that's what cayenne pepper is. Whereas paprika is the same, but, like, with a bell pepper, like a sweet pepper. They take that, and they grind that up, so you get, like, that peppery taste without um, without any of the heat. Hmm. I was expecting, like, black pepper. No, black pepper is a different thing entirely. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, totally different families. I was expecting black pepper in the in the sauce. Oh, you were? Yeah. From why? I don't know. I just had it. Oh. I had it in my brain that this huh. is going to be a peppery. Oh, 
Like a black pepper. Yeah, right. Oh, no, I think it, I, I haven't looked at the ingredients, but I, well, I know one of the ingredients is for sure. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. We'll Very clear. Later with the tasting notes, but I'm certain that other than that one ingredient is basically just oil and paprika powder, hmm. my guess, so, which is, like I said, just basically just ground up bell pepper, red bell pepper in this, in this case. It is bright red. For a second, I thought I had a seed in mine, and then I realized I think it was just a breadcrumb from one of the chicken nuggets. Yeah, uh, I think it's perfectly homogenous. I don't think that, I, like I said, I don't think there's, I didn't detect anything else hidden away in there, so. Um, um, I, I mean, I don't know. Well, that's a more of a tasting note, I guess. So. Yeah, it's it's definitely looks like something that would stain your skin if it got on it, though, I would say that. Oh, yeah. Which, you know, paprika, I think, is known for lending, like we've said this before, too, it definitely lends color long before it lends any real flavor. Hmm. True. Yeah. You are the paprika pipey. I sure am. And I know a lot of people have said that they thought there's certain ingredients that people think are like, well, turmeric's a good example. You know, a lot of people use that for almost more like a food coloring, like a bright yellow food coloring. And a lot of people feel the same way about paprika, like they use it for like a bright red food coloring, essentially. But they actually do both of them have their own distinct flavors on their own. It's just you have to put them in a pretty large concentration to really get them. And uh, I think that's going to lead us right on to the tasting notes, which, hmm, I think this is going to be easy. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tori, do you want to lead us off with the tasting, your initial tasting notes? Yeah, sure. So my tasting notes, I, I'll tell you, I was excited to try it because I know we've talked about that in the past and it was very, it was you know, clear and obvious to me about the whole paprika lending color before it lends flavor. So that, of course, raised the question in my brain as to what the hell does paprika taste like? Let's. You know what? We should mention, before you go fully dive deep, we should mention what we tried it on. You gave you gave a little bit of a preview to this earlier, but we tried it on a flip side half pretzel, half cracker cracker, which are my favorite crackers, and they are well salted. They're good. Very salty. We though. tried it on some uh, cheese, some New York sharp cheddar cheese. Which is tasty cheese. And uh, we also tried it on some of our traditional chicken nuggets. Dino Nugs. Yeah, the Dino Nuggets, the Tyson Dino Nugs. But with that with that in mind, go ahead and lead us off with your tasting notes tour. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, that ra- getting back, it raised the question in my mind, what does paprika taste like? And now that I've had this paprika, what do they call this? The paprika paste, excuse me. I think paprika tastes like salt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the spoiler, which this stuff is aggressively salty. Yeah, I mean, you said it's perfectly homogenized and that you didn't taste any other uh, tidbits in there. I think anyone would be hard pressed to. I mean, it, it was, it is just salt cranked up. It is an electrolyte. I mean, I can, you know, there's, there's electricity running through it right now. There's so many ions and shit floating around in there. So, oh, yeah. so yeah, dude, it is salty, salty salt. And I'm convinced that this has more of, of a, an ingredient application and less of a dipping. A- application. Uh, yeah, you're 100 percent correct as far as I'm concerned. I don't know exactly how you would use this. Yeah, I, I, I'm inclined to agree with you. I was told that I should spread it on something like a cracker or a piece of bread or something like that. And yeah, I don't know about that. In, in <laughs> retrospect, uh, what, what did you taste? Anything other than the salt tori that you want to share with the listeners? Well, I mean, once I, f- I, got, I gauged it and I figured it out and I put down about a gallon and a half of water. <laughs> uh, yeah, I started using the Dino Nugget almost. If you can envision such a thing, like an artist's brush, like a very fine artist's brush, and I was just getting just the slightest little bit of this red paprika paste on the edge, and you know, taking a very dainty nibble. I know you are about dainty, e, but um, in certain applications, <laughs> it's, it's desired. <laughs> oh, at any rate, yeah. So, I mean, given. The I think the overall daintiness of it, you know, the dainty dip and the dainty bite, it uh, it worked out. It, I mean, at least I got a little bit more chicken, I think, at that point. <laughs> but still, even at that, it's not a it's not a sauce that I would seek out. I mean, geez, if that's the only serving that I took of that paprika sauce, and I had a jar of that size, I. I mean, that could be in my fame. That could be a legacy. Yeah, that could be passed down for generations. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm using maybe four molecules every six months of this stuff and not liking it. Um, well, I guess we're getting into the ratings portion there. But yeah, there you have it. I mean, so that I found to be the most uh, fruitful way uh, to have it. Well, and, and, and even that's debatable. Yeah. I mean, when I first opened it, I did notice that it did definitely smell like 
paprika, which is not quite exactly like a bell pepper, you know, but it has some similar notes. It definitely does have like a peppery smell. And the initial thing on your tongue, you know, you you can kind of get some sense of like a paprika thing, but yeah, overwhelmingly it is salt. And it's so salty that it almost like wants to burn a hole in your tongue with how it's like sucking all the water out of it. Like it's painful almost how salty it is. And I tried it first on a on a dino nuggy, and it was immediately clear that it was way too salty. And I tried some on a cracker and some on the cheese, and it was just overwhelmingly salty, especially on something like the pretzels that already has salt on it to begin with. And it does kind of make me wonder, like, yeah, is this supposed to be like an ingredient? Is this supposed to substitute for paprika? But the thing about that to me is that in anything that you're going to use it in, you do have to use a lot of paprika if you want to get that paprika flavor. And it's kind of the same as this. Like, in order to really get a lot of flavor out of it, it's going to be so salty. It's going to make everything so salty way before you get any of that real paprika flavor. So I'm struggling to think what you would use it on. But what about you, Eric? Yeah, Adam, I, I have to totally agree. I, I made the mistake of dumping this right on top of one of the flip side crackers. Like, a whole, I, like, like a whole dump. Like my whole, yeah, like, like, like the whole, oh. like, exactly. <laughs> and then I, and then I, and then I, then I decided I was, a, I was a little scared. So like I scraped a lot of it off. I still had an aggressive amount on there. And, um, yeah, that first bite was shocking and overwhelming and, um, and like yeah, almost like you said, like painful. And, um, and I've been, having a lot of salty foods recently or at least thinking foods were salty when i was sick i was you know living off like chicken soup which was seemed quite salty as well but not like this this is uh this is a whole nother level and um yeah i didn't really care for it on the the chicken or cheese i don't think any of those uh articles were the right thing for this using it in cooking would be interesting um it smelled to me like a like like you said you got that pepper and almost like a, like a, like a garden like if you like walk into like a garden of peppers like i got like an, a little bit of an earthiness of, of smell at least but i did not get that in flavor uh after the fact after suffering through the tasting articles i grabbed a toothpick and tried a little bit you know just on the edge of a toothpick and i still just all i really picked up was was salt i would be much more inclined to eat paprika powder before i would you know Ooh. <laughs> do you yeah. remember the cinnamon challenge from back in the day i do yeah i do <laughs> it's really a paprika challenge yeah <clears throat> probably equally as difficult i don't I'm think sure. you're wrong like i i'm kind of a little bit confused on this because to me it seems like you could take like an entire jar of paprika and just add like some oil to it or something like that and you would get more of what i was expecting you know agreed mm. i don't know why this is so salty it's shameful um, I really, and, and, and spoiler alert, the website doesn't really have a whole lot of helpful information on it either, but I would love to see like a recipe that uses this because I could see it almost being like a, like a garnish type thing, you know, like you just put a little dollop on top of something else. Like if you wanted to make like, I'm envisioning like, I don't know, some dip that was mostly like sour cream or something like that. And you wanted mm. to put one little drop on top just for color. I could see that, but I'm thinking like, if you made, like, let's just say a dip, something creamy, I'm, I'm thinking, like, and which is initially why I got the cheese for us to taste it on, something to, like, tone it down but a little bit creamier, I could envision you, like, having one teaspoon of this in, like, an eight-ounce container of sour cream, and that being sufficient, Yeah, you know? or almost more than not needed. Like, yeah, like, like a quarter of a teaspoon would probably be enough. Not a tablespoon, a teaspoon, I'm saying. Right, well, yeah. I'm, I'm small. Still, yeah, I know. I'm saying even the smaller, smaller one. Like when I'm baking, like the the little itty bitty one that comes. In I've never used set. those before in my You've entire never life. Never used those. <laughs> no, I, I don't measure anything even smaller than that. Like anything that's smaller than a tablespoon does not get measured in my house. <laughs> You're gonna be mad at me, but uh, you ready for this one? Okay. Hollandaise sauce. And I was wondering. I was okay. thinking eggs too. Okay. I was thinking like, like yeah. if, you, if you did like a sunny side up egg, and you put just a. A little schleckle. Yeah, you know, yeah. like that. On yeah. the, in the middle of your yolk, like, you know, I'm, I have yeah. I have a little dollop on the end of my toothpick here as I'm holding up to the, to yeah. the group yeah, here. Yeah, like a, a rice-sized piece, maybe. Yeah. It's crying for something rich, man. Over the yeah, top, that's... rich and creamy. It's it, it needs it. But at that point, really, it's you're really just getting the salt, you know? That's what I'm kind of missing, Yeah, too. Like, absolutely. It's just a salt stand-in, you know? And that's, right. that's what I'm really throwing me off about this. I'm almost kind of like, what's... What's the point? Is it just like red salt? Is that the idea? Hmm. Oh, yeah. that was the other thought I had. This is basically the red version of Marmite. Uh, I think this is even saltier than Marmite. <laughs> wow, yeah, boy, that would... 
That's you're a not wrong. Flip a coin. I mean, That's yeah, a tough one. I, right? I do think that actually this is considerably saltier than the Marmite <laughs> was even. Good, and I, maybe yeah. some good Aussies would like this. Yeah, but, I don't know. I mean, maybe if you did it kind of the same way where you spread it like... I don't know. This is so salty. Like, I picked up my toothpick that I've already sucked all the sauce off of, and I put it back in my mouth, and I could still taste the salt impregnated in the toothpick. Yep, totally That's agree. how wow. salty. I'm honestly shocked how they even make it look like this, because it looks like paprika paste. Like, if you have salt, it's pretty easy to see salt and stuff. If it's like your normal, like, just granulated salt. This almost had to have been, like, salt that was, like, ground into, like, a powder, you know? Like not, not even grains of salt, but like actual like powderized salt was put into this in order right. for it to be this texture, you know? Right, right. To get that, that emulsified, yeah. Which like crystallized, yeah. Which the reason that they don't grind salt like that is because, it, you know, they make like confectioner sugar. This is like the salt version of that. Okay. The reason they don't do that with salt is because the more surface area, the faster it dissolves on your tongue and the more flavor you get from it, you know? So typically, that's why they'll make like bigger pieces for things or versus, you know, like table salt. And here's the reason they don't do that. Yeah, it's too much. It's way too intense. You know, like the the overall quantity of salt on this might have been better if it had been like big kosher salt or something, you know? Yeah. But it's just so finely ground that it's just like an assault. The crunch tongue. would have been off-putting from the like the rock salt. Yeah, but I mean the salt is off-putting already. Yeah, you know? good point. Like yeah. that's kind of my thought. Like I really kind of wish they hadn't done that. I yeah, maybe if you mix this in with something, but at that point, I don't think you would even notice that it was there. Mm. It, I don't know. Very subtle. You'd have to be very subtle with it, I think, in order for the salt to not be overwhelming. I was looking for an expiration date and I did not find one. But yeah, it oof. can't expire. It's yeah, you ain't salt. worried about that. Oh man, it's, you have fucking deer coming out of your yard trying to lick it out of your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Has you guys ever licked a salt lick, a deer salt lick? No. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm talking about though, right? Yeah, oh yes. Yeah. Tori, have you ever licked a salt lick? Yes. Yeah, I have too. I got paid. What would and, possess you guys to do that? <laughs> one of my buddies Curiosity. bet me a dollar that I wouldn't do it in a Walmart one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said I had to lick it from end to end. Oh, oh I, God! I, I did. And it was a similar experience to this. I will say that. Yeah, it's about right. Yeah, just very intensely salty. So, um, with all that being said, it's time for Eric's favorite segment of the show: the ingredients. We get to find out how many different ways they can now, put salt in the ingredient list. Here, I say before you go, are you guys saying first ingredient? Here's my guesses: there's three ingredients. Some sort of oil. I don't know if it's olive oil or soybean oil. It's probably soybean oil. And maybe water. And then salt and paprika. But I'm saying probably three ingredients. Oil, paprika, salt. What I, order? I cheated. I, I, order? I looked right. at them already. I cheated. Oh, okay. My guess... Salt second or first? It has yeah, to that's be what I'm thinking. <laughs> I think it's second. I think it's paprika, then salt, then some sort of oil. Mm. Hit me, Eric. All right. It is raw pepper. Okay. Salt. Yep. Citric acid. Really? And then p- potassium sorbate, which is a thickener? Okay. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Can't remember. No xanthum. No xanthum. Is uh, there more? No, that is it. Those are the four ingredients. Raw There's a pepper, liquid in there somewhere. Salt, citric acid. Uh-uh. There's a, some sort of liquid in there. That's potassium sorbate. It could be citric acid, but... It actually does look like it's passing the lizard test just fine, holding the jar upside down. Crazy. No, there's there's some liquid in it though, right? Can you check that again? No liquid. Like, you don't have to open it. I know damn well that there is liquid in it. Some in some way. So okay, okay, raw pepper, salt, citric acid, potassium sorbate. So maybe maybe what they're saying raw pepper. Maybe the water is from the pepper. From the raw pepper, sure. Yeah, maybe maybe they didn't add any water to this, but that's and they pack it with salt to the point where it absorbs all the water, sucks the water out of it, <laughs> and becomes a paste. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah, I'm curious what the citric acid. I'm sure citric acid is should be a byproduct. Preserve the color. That's what I was wondering. Maybe it's a color thing. That's what I'm kind of wondering also about the potassium sorbate. Maybe that's a color thing. But other than that. I, I don't know what those things, things are doing. I know what the salt and I know what the pepper are doing. Oh, I kind of know what the pepper is doing. <laughs> yeah, right. Pepper's <laughs> I know what the pepper hiding in the back. Be doing, but yeah. well, he's whispering. Which it makes a little bit of sense now because, and this is a tricky. Bear with me here because 
we were vacillating on whether salt or paprika was first. Now, hear me out. So, I think in terms of actual pepper, salt is probably number one. Because when you get a vegetable, now that I know that it's made with pepper and not paprika, when you get a vegetable, vegetables are like 90% water. Right. They're super watery. So I think if you actually broke that down in terms of like vegetable matter versus water versus salt, I think it actually would be like water, salt, paprika. That's my guess. Hmm. I believe you. It tastes that way. That's for sure. I think that makes a lot more sense. You're blowing my mind, man. That's my guess. Um, well, that was uh, shocking to know at this point, I guess I would say. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at their actual website and just see what they have to say for themselves. What do you have to say for yourself? So they don't really give you a whole lot on the website here. I'll tell you right there. Simply the best. It's a very simple, it's a very simple website, and it says... As the ingredients, and then it says, tell someone you know about this product. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very desperate, but apparently this bend, this bend, uh, bend or bendy, benda, bendy makes a whole plethora of different types of things. They have, uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I know oh. you guys get a kick out of doing that, but we're not going to do it. No. I, don't, I don't think it adds as much as we think it does, <laughs> but we will do the condiments. Well, we'll settle on that. Now, we're only going to read some of the condiments. And the reason for this, well, well, we'll do the fast fire first. Go ahead. Eric, hit was the first one. Paprika paste mild. Tori? You got paprika paste hot. Eric? Crushed paprika mild. Tori? Ben, they crushed paprika hot. The, but almost the same thing. Oh, that's in powder form. I Is guess. It? Okay. I guess. Crushed. Eric? Yeah. We have goulash cream. Interesting. Ooh. And that is all for their branded ones, the ones with the bend or bendy or bend a name on them. Yeah, that last one's actually kind of a funny, like, we could almost talk a little bit at length. Did you guys grow up having goulash? Uh, Not my favorite. I did, but I'm, that's also another... Are you the white camp or the red camp? <laughs> red. I red. I grew up with the white. But let's circle back. <laughs> Hold on. Let's, pa- okay. let's put a pin in this and circle back to this, because there's one other thing I want to mention. This harkens back to when we did the Beaver brand horseradish sauces, and there's another brand they also sold on their website which was the Ingelhofer, and we're speculating that that was basically made from the same factory as the Beaver, but strangely, this Bend brand also has Ingelhofer products on their website, and it doesn't have their name on it, so it's not clear to me whether they're laying claim to the Ingelhofer brand, or like they're contesting Beaver for it. I don't exactly know how that goes. Maybe they're all owned by the same company. Maybe Bend also owns Beaver, or Beaver also owns Bend. I, I don't know exactly how that works, but they are listing five different Ingelhofer brand sauces. And I, I suppose the other possibility is that Ingelhofer is partially manufactured by Beaver and partially manufactured by Bend, and these are actually separate products, but I'm pretty sure I remember seeing some of these, because I remember that creamy dill mustard being on the Beaver. On the Beaver, yeah, website. So I don't know if we'll be able to get to the bottom of that, but that does seem... Strange, to say the least. Let's let's go back now. Now that we've talked about this, what about the information tab? An international story we have on our hands here. Yeah, they're from Hungary. Is a short version. <laughs> it looks like a lot of Hungarian history, right? Yeah, Chicago it moved to the states. Chicago smoked meats, grocery routes, grocery stores. Yeah, they're not telling us anything about the beaver, which is mainly what I really want to know. And now they're in the hype in their sausage. I guess a sausage is a big deal. Yeah, it says about their. They have an about us. They have information. And under the information tab, they have about us. And then the next thing down is about our salami. The third thing down is health, which basically says avoid our products if you have <laughs> any risk of high, high hypertension. High because, blood pressure, yeah, pregnant. Because you absolutely... Oh, this is health benefits of tart cherries. Wow. Okay, well, their, their website's all over the fucking place. That's, they're bizarre. <laughs> the website's strange. I don't know what's going on with this or their products or them stealing the Inglehopper name. I have no... <laughs> that choice of bright red, too. It's like... Yeah, it's really hard to read websites. <laughs> But yeah, anyways, so let's get back. To, that is an interesting subject you bring up. So you had white goulash. Yep, I always grow grow up with the with the white creamy goulash, basically using cream of mushroom soup and um. We've talked about this before on the show. I, I think have we talked about it on the show? I think I know, so. I, I think we talked about it our, like personally outside of the show. Maybe sure we I think yeah. Um, you know, like peas, ground beef, and and, and noodles were thrown in. So more like a, almost I guess, like a stroganoff. Yeah, like a stroganoff. Yeah, we definitely talked about this before, either on the show or off the show. 
But Tori, I believe you and I probably had just like noodles with like a tomato sauce and like some meat maybe in it. Yeah, it was a red sauce. Yeah, I don't know what made it stand out. Maybe it was elbow macaroni instead of yeah, ours like, was, pasta. Yeah, it was, ours always had elbow macaroni. And this is another tricky subject too because the whole thing about like actual Hungarian goulash I think is like actually a dish. And I think typically the, the thing about goulash is it just means like fucking whatever. Yeah, you know, like chop like suey type idea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. So it can pretty much be whatever you want. I think that the red version is more akin to what they would actually, you know, if you were to get something hungry, I think that's probably closer to what you would get than what Eric's talking about. Well, I think, I don't know, I do think it's like, I, I have seen once before, like a creamy red where it was like, like a paprika, paprika. Paparica. Bisque, almost. All right, so with noodles and meat. Yeah, it was... <clears> that'd it was, be good. It was kind of like <laughs> peppery and smoky and with noodles and, and, and like a creamy sauce. So it was it was a, it was a different, interesting take on it. But uh, I don't know if... I don't see that often and I don't... Uh, yeah, I can't say I've ever been to Hungary to have anything authentic from any Hungarian restaurants over there claiming to serve goulash. So Yeah, I can't say this with any real authority, but my suspicion is that actual hungarian goulash is a dish that is probably more like you know paprika paste type thing with probably some sort of noodle and probably actually like cut up peppers and stuff in it Hmm. and just from an american perspective something that looked vaguely close to what they would make was basically spaghetti sauce and noodles and meat right you know yeah i'm guessing that probably the flavor profile is not terribly similar it was just something that looked like that based on what you could get in america with the grocery stores we had yes true but Mm. due to the you know the vagueness of goulash as a concept i think that's what leads to the white versus and essentially in in spirit it could be whatever you want some goop with noodles you know yeah fair and there's little diced up vegetables in there too right yeah I, i mean like i said i think that there generally is but again it's kind of you know, whatever you want it to be. So right. we always put peas in ours. So peas, peas and peas, ground beef, like cream and mushroom soup, and egg noodles. Which definitely sounds more like a stroganoff type thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. And you said beef. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, ground beef. Yeah. It definitely sounds like a stroke. Yeah. But that, since we're kind of on our second uh, rewind, I wanted to also go back like, really quick because I thought about this. You know, we talked about this on our last episode. And I did some more thinking about this, the whole thing with Hofbrauhaus. House. Oh. Yeah, because I didn't I don't feel like I quite articulated what I wanted to say oh boy. the other day, which is nothing favorable. It's not bad. But I really think that Hofbrauhaus House is kind of like it's specifically designed and engineered to make you feel like you had a really special and unique experience. And it works. But if you go again, then you realize that that same special experience that you had that night happens literally every night and they have it down like a formulaic thing and it's specifically engineered to make everyone that goes in there feel like that. And then you realize it's basically like an assembly line of synthetic fun. So it's fine. (laughs) Wow. It's fine to go once, but if you ever go again, you immediately realize like, oh, that wasn't special at all. This is just their shtick. You know what I mean? Mm. Because it's kind of like... At least in Pittsburgh, you go there and, yeah, you drink the big giant glasses of beer. You have some food that's, like, you know, not German and vague and mediocre. <laughs> and at some point, you drink enough beer and someone gets up on the table and starts dancing on the table. And they're having a good time with the accordion. And they're wearing the cute little outfits. And there's the girls with the beer coming out, you know. And you keep ordering more and more beer. And they eventually, they get to the point where they play Take Me Home Country Road. And everyone sings along. And it's this big to-do. And it's special and happy and all this. And it's they do that exact same thing 365 nights a year. Wow. <laughs> it's the truth, though, right? It is the truth. It is the truth. Yeah, that it, it is exactly what they, they are. It's like going to Disneyland. Like, they're just engineering an experience for you, and you go and enjoy it once, and you have to just take it for what it is, and you realize that it's that happens to everyone every time they go every night. Yeah, I can't remember if I've been mm-hmm. to the Opera House here in Pittsburgh twice or just once. Once was about all that was memorable. And then most recently, actually, just uh, last year, I went again into the Hofbrau House in Cleveland, but I was there for like lunchtime, which was kind of enjoyable because there was like, you know, five people there. It was very quiet. There wasn't anyone playing music. It wasn't very obnoxious. Just, oh, we went to have some food before we went and saw The Lion King there at Playhouse Square in Cleveland. Cool. So, yeah. 
I mean, I went one time years ago with some friends I was going to school with at the time, and it, yeah, they got me, you know, it did feel like it was something special. And I just like, that was a really fun, like memorable night in my, in my mind, you know, which was good. You know, that's, there's nothing I can say ill about that, except for like, I went, I don't know, maybe it was a year, maybe less than a year after that. And I was like, oh, even like the lineup of songs is exactly (laughs) the same. It's the exact same people. It's the exact same beer. The people, everything is exactly the same. Everyone gets up on the table at the same point in the night, you know, (laughs) like it's, it's, engineered to do that like a renaissance fair type deal like there's all these actors in the crowd yeah or? it's yeah. essentially it's essentially like a renaissance fair except for it doesn't even change like at least the renaissance fair they change they come up with a new like thing every year or like if you go there throughout the day they have three performances throughout the day for the main stage where they do the whole jousting shtick you know but the thing is like between morning noon and night there's like three slightly different events that are done there but it's the same roughly the same thing but yeah if, as long as you take it for that, like, you're going for a, a certain performance and take it for that, sure. But if you actually, like, genuinely buy into what they're trying to sell, you're going to be disappointed if you go back. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Go once. <laughs> Don't ever go again. <laughs> you know, Some people get off at going to Disney World more than once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Disney World's a little bit different just because it's a lot bigger and there's, like, rides and you're not going to see everything in one trip. Fair enough. That's a totally different thing. I am, I'm saying it is like the synthetic engineered fun aspect is exactly the same. But yeah, you definitely could go to Disney World twice. But like going to Hopper How twice is just not that big. There's not that much there. You, you get the 100% of the experience every time you go. I know where I'm going for my birthday next year. <laughs> I mean, I would go. I don't care. <laughs> the, the, the magic or has already been ruined for me. Like, I would go and I would eat and I would drink the beer. I'm not going to fucking... I might dance on the table, but I'm it's, I'm going to recognize it for what it is. It's kind of a sham, you know? Right, right. That's all. Sham. I mean, their food and their beer, too, is like, from the standpoint of like a restaurant, you know, the whole like what made McDonald's so like, you know, what made McDonald's McDonald's was the fact that it was consistent, you know, like, wow, you know, you're walking in there, you're going to order the, yes. the the Big Mac. It's always going to be the same whatever, right? you know, whatever yeah. goes on it. So you go to the Hofbrau and yeah, they have the same lineup of mediocre beers, mediocre beers and the same in a giant the, bottle that you know, they'll sell you for $25 if you want to take your glass home, you know, because it's so oh, yeah. special. Oh. Yeah. Take your glass home. Don't you get know. fooled for that. <laughs> the one that you had that special night with that was specifically engineered for you, you know. Wow. Yeah. Not that I'm salty or anything about it. No, I'm yeah. salty because they snookered me because I went once and I had a really good time and then I went again and ruined it. That's why I'm salty. You're salty from this paprika paste. I'm also extremely salty from the paprika paste, but I think this will be a fonder memory in my mind than, than Hopper House is, is at this point. And it's not bad. Like you said, they do it well and they do it consistently, but it's like it's yeah. so consistent. Yeah. And it's it feels so... Unspecial. Like you said, you could go to one in Pittsburgh and then you could go to one in fucking Arkansas and have the exact same experience. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And it, people would still get up on the tables at the same point throughout the night and they'd still offer to sell you your glass for, it was $25 like, you know, 10 years ago. It's probably, it's probably $75 to take your glass home with you now. I don't know. That's insane. With inflation and a decade of time going by. So right. maybe. Nowadays, I, I recommend you go to like a local indie brewery where you can pay $20 for that glass from you know if like you dancing get, gnome <laughs> like if you i get did. like a growler or something that you can <laughs> refill that I, I, I don't know yeah the hopper house like what what are you going to do with that glass it's not going to fit in your cupboards <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean like it's and it, you can you have the glass and for this experience that everyone can have that's for, your riri trophy yeah kind of but uh speaking of other disappointing things it's time for us to get on to the ratings portion of the show ah ooh. What a sad day. Yeah, this is uh, and this is a shame because this was given us to by, by a friend of the podcast, and it sounded like she had had this before and really liked it. To her credit, she loves salt. Yeah, to be to be <laughs> perfectly fair, she is a salt fiend. She is one of the most addicted to salt people that I know. So yeah, it's heavy. There, uh, yeah, there's been dishes that I've had that she's made which were like to me inedibly salty that she thought were like finally had achieved her level of desired salt. Oof. Wow. So to me, yeah, I could see her just like dipping chips in this, you know, and that being fun. Gag me. <laughs> oh, God. Man. So, Ugh. yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's it's tricky, too, because it's not bad. It's just that it's so assaultingly salty. It is assaultingly salty. It is. Which reminds me, 
there was one time there were two peanuts walking down the road. Oh, whoa. <laughs> one whoa. of them was assaulted. One of them was assaulted. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you got that was got, a much cleaner joke for you. I'm impressed, Adam. <laughs> probably got hit with a fucking paprika paste. But. Yeah. All right, Tori, you want to lead us off with your rating for this? Dude, this isn't in my wheelhouse at all. And given what we judged it on, dude, oh. I have to give it like I have to give it a zero. <laughs> I just don't, I don't like it. I think it's just way too much. Maybe it has a home somewhere. I'm sorry, Kirsty. <laughs> I know you really like it, but man, this isn't my cup of tea. Not one. Okay, I, I'll, I, I don't like it. <laughs> I'll keep this and I'll give it back to her. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's bad. It's bad. It's a zero. I hope this wasn't like a cruel joke that she was playing on us. Like, <laughs> well, oh, maybe. here, try this on your podcast. We're going to dehydrate these guys for the next month. Yeah. <laughs> Be pissing blood. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, oof. For me, Yikes. Yeah, I'm going to give... It's hard, man. I'm going to have to... I think I'm kind of <laughs> starting off on the same point as you, Tor, to be honest. I, I'm going to give it a discretionary point for the fact that the one little taste of pepper that I liked I thought was good. It has a pleasant color that I like, and the texture is nice. There and I'm going to give it a second discretionary point just because Kirsten gave it to me, and I thought that was nice of her to do. Donate a sauce <laughs> to the show. New and unopened. Served room temperature like I like. Not like something that someone pulled used out of their cupboard, so... Give her a discretionary point for that, but yeah, who fuck? I mean, that is a generous two. <laughs> oh, damn. That's a generous two. Eric, uh, what about you? Multiple times throughout the show, I tried various little dips of my toothpick. Like, you know, yeah, or like you said, sucking off the sauce and then waiting for it to, uh, you know, dry out even more and then still putting that back in my mouth and still just tasted salt. Yeah, I, it, no, it's not, it's not. So something I, could, I don't even want to try. I don't want to try. I don't want to finish what's on my plate. I don't want to try and salvage the sauce. Can't. I can't imagine even cooking with it. I do not see. I just. I don't get it. It's not not for me apparently because it's way too salty. So um, I agree with Tori. I'm gonna have to go to zero. Wow, this is gonna be our zero. lowest. Zero. <laughs> this is gonna be our lowest rate. <laughs> this is gonna be our. Lowest I mean, there's just no redeeming sauce. qualities. It's just salt. It's just. Yeah, and it's I'm, too much. It's it's. I can't even imagine cooking with it. As we were talking about, like, oh, maybe like, yeah, a grain of a rice amount worth. I mean, half of a grain of a rice worth, he, and like a whole dish. At which point, you know, why? I gotta be honest. I think I'm being too generous to even go to two. I, I can't even. I'm gonna go down to one point five. Yeah, that's that's. Where I'm locking in at one point five, and honestly, I think I'm still being pretty generous. But the one thing I'm gonna give it some points for is that I'm holding off on the off chance that we're just flagrantly misusing this you know like they Maybe don't give any bad. serving instructions on the can <laughs> no certainly we were on the website they don't have anything on the website yeah. about how to use it so it's possibly that we are just like violently misusing this they're certainly not helping you yeah you can't hate us for trying yeah I mean, right? they're not helping you in any way you know this is something that needs instructions for it i do think that i could use this i think i could make good use of this if i made like a macaroni and cheese from a roux Usually, I end up putting some salt in it, and I usually end up putting some paprika in it. So, I definitely think that you could put a little dollop of this and mix it in with your macaroni and cheese to bring the saltiness and the paprika taste up. But, man, that's one use case that I think I'm being exceedingly generous for. Wow. Yeah, I, know, I agree. I know there are some other, like, uh, cucumber salad dishes that, like, Hungarian restaurants will make where they take, like, sour cream... They put black pepper in it, and they put paprika in it, maybe some vinegar and stuff like that, and salt, and, like, mixed cucumbers in it. I could see them using this as an ingredient for that, too, you know, like, a little bit. But, man, I'm being so generous with that. Like, this is... So, very limited applications, and you gotta know... You gotta know what you're doing with it, because, like, I just feel like even in both those ex uh, examples, Adam, I think it could be... Very easily overdone. Yeah, and if you put a... If, you're, if your hand slipped and you put too much, you ruin the dish. Oh, you're toast. Yeah. yeah. See ya. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's sketchy for me. And I am partially Hungarian. I know normally I, I claim Italian heritage, but I am partially Hungarian. So I feel like I'm well versed to speak on this. And this is a tricky one. I think you are too, Eric, right? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm like largely Hungarian, like 40%. Yeah. Like I'm the largest, that's the largest percentage of me is Hungarian. Locksmith is, uh, my last name in Hungarian. So interesting. Hmm. Yeah. My, my mom's side is more leaning Hungarian. So like I said, I feel well versed to speak on this, but man, yikes. Person's yeah. getting this one back. Over the top. I can see her eating with a spoon. Ugh. That's unreal, dude. You guys remember in the, like, 
in the late nineties, how like if you ever had a dog and the dog like took a shit in the yard and you didn't clean it up, how the how the top of it would turn white. You guys remember that? White dog shit? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, okay. Eric, you remember I'm not that? proud of it, but yeah, I remember. No, I, I never. we never had a dog, so... So they used to put a lot of, like, heavy concentration of bone meal in dog food, and then they had to stop doing that, I guess, because it's not actually food, you know, like the bone meal. But that bone meal dehydrating in the sun was what turned dog shit white back in, like, the 90s, and then it doesn't do that anymore because they had to pull that out. Huh. What I'm getting at here is that yeah, what I, are you getting at? I suspect that if you were to take some of this and you were to put it in a pile, leave it out in the sun, it would also turn white and crystallize due to the salt content. If you evaporated some of the water out of there, you guys ever make those crystals like with Epsom salt? You know, you dangle a string in a, in a salty thing of water and yes. it crystallizes on there? Yeah. I think this would do exactly the same thing if you let a, a string dehydrate in there. You pull out a red crystal. <laughs> It might be kind of cool, right? It looked like rubies, huh? Yeah, much like the crystals that are going to be forming in our kidneys after trying this. So. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it for us this week with the uh, Bendy, Bend, Bende, Benda, Paprika Paste. Um, with all that being said, Eric? Closing thoughts, huh? Do you have any closing thoughts you'd like to share with the listeners? You've had two weeks to think about it. I, I did have something that I thought was You've been quarantined. interesting. You had right. nothing better to do. Yeah, it was, we had, I mean, we're, we're having some beautiful weather right now. It's, uh, we're having a prolonged spring, really. Summer, the so- dog days of summer, at least the, the heat of summer really just has yet to arrive. So, uh, currently, I think today was like 75 degrees and just light breeze and it was just beautiful out. But a couple days back, we had a, a warmer day, still not like super hot. And I, and I was driving down the road and I saw a guy just sitting on the porch, just not doing a thing. Yeah. Just relaxing. And, and, and I, and I thought about it. I'm thinking, if I'm not watching TV, or on my phone, like, and then I thought about Adam telling me how, you know, how, how hard is it for you to sit for 10 seconds before we start the podcast? Like, I don't ever not have something in front of me unless I'm sleeping. Like, I don't ever just sit and do nothing. Like, that's a thing, though. Eric, like, people do that. Huh. You don't ever sit and do nothing? Like, are you, are you not counting watching TV? Or, and I'm not. I'm not. Like, if, if I'm actively watching TV or watching a YouTube video on my phone, like, I know, I, you're, you're technically more catatonic than if you were sleeping when you're watching TV. So you're saying what, you're basically what you're saying is you don't meditate or anything I like don't that. meditate, exactly. And I think maybe, I don't know. In reflection, I was like, maybe I should pick up meditation. I need to do something to just, I need to learn how to sit still and not feel the need to grab a phone or call somebody or look something up or read something or, to just sit for a extended period of time and literally just I don't I don't do it um, I don't do it often that's for sure. Now, yes, I do plenty of binge watching TV and naps and <laughs> reading and wa- and yeah you know things that are very static uh, stationary activities. So I'm not saying that I'm not you know I don't know, I just think it's interesting interesting that uh, you know med- meditating or, or being able to just relax and soak in. Doing absolutely nothing. I don't know. It's something that I just don't really make time to do. I wow, guess. that may possibly be the best closing thoughts you've ever had. Before. <laughs> that was quite <laughs> a long the entire show. It was long rounded. It was a, quite a little. No, story. it was actually good. Like you know, that is important to be like present and mindful. You know, periodically and like centered. You know, right. I do definitely think that's important. So yeah, that is actually. Pretty fucking wise for once, Eric. I would give you mad fucking props on that. Well done, me. Well, thank you. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I'll, I'll try my best to uh, hand and glove old E's final thought. Okay, I say I know I know one thing I need to say in yeah. any case, which is that it's time for touching thoughts with Tori. Yeah, I wasn't gonna let you get away without those intros. I love yeah. those intros get better and better every week. Yeah, I get more into it. So that's good. I love it. So yeah, we have a lot of choices out here. We have a lot of choices. There's several other podcasts you could be listening to, but you're listening. You made the choice to listen to us, and we thank you for that. So I, I, I just it, we're gonna talk a lot about choices, and it's okay to choose you. I think that's important to remember, not in a selfish way, but in a way that you can sort of take care of yourself. I'm trying to shoehorn in this with ease, you know, be present, be mindful, and uh, and yeah, just uh, it's okay to choose you. And I'm so glad you're here. We're so glad you're here, of course. And yeah, I can't wait for next week because it's going to be fun as always. And that'll do it for me. Yeah. Yeah. I am. I think I'm finally finished up with at least this batch of work travel. So I'm looking forward to getting my life back kind of in the normal 
pace and normal order. It should be a little bit less chaotic, which is nice and um, kind of ties in with what you guys think. You know, get your own lives less, more in order, less chaotic. So, well, that being said, thank you guys so much for listening. And as always, we'll catch you next week. Oh no, it's the end of the show. Thank goodness there are several other episodes waiting just for you. Check out our Instagram. We like to have some fun over there. We post the sauce bottle pics if you're curious and the occasional meme. That's going to be sauce spoken official. You know, despite our humble nature, we are accepting donations, believe it or not. Look us up on PayPal. That's going to be at sauce spoken. Hey, and if you like what you hear, grease those palms, babe. Lastly, roll up your sleeves and get into the nitty gritty at sauce spoken.wordpress.com we have show notes and details check it out share us with a family member or a friend if you're enjoying it i'm certain they will too good night